Welcome back to Limbus Company, Patch Node Analysis, and New Identity Overview. This week we've got the pretty much the main identity of Season 3 finally being added to the game, that being the Pequod Captain, Ishmael, an identity of Ahab, whose actions reflect Ishmael's very closely in Canto 5, so it makes perfect sense that she would get her identity. Now, of course, it is normal Ahab, not Gas Harpoon Ahab, which makes a lot of sense. Gas Harpoon, we're likely not going to see for a long time. But any, either way, this identity has a lot of really cool things going for it. It's a bleed and burn hybrid, with a little bit of poise too. Don't know if it'll count for the sake of the poise uh, fusion gift, but anyways, let's just get into it. Starting out with the trailer for Captain Ishmael. Captain Ishmael, as I mentioned earlier, um, has some bleed on her skills, has some burn on her skills. She has some poise on her skills, technically, with her skill 3. I don't know if it will count for the sake of Lucky Pouch. I don't know if she'll count as a poise identity. It would be really insane if she did, because then that, her skill 3 would gain the benefits from Lucky Pouch. But if not, that's also still fairly fine. But yeah, um... So, she's got a couple unique mechanics, which we'll get to when we need to get to. We'll just go through in skill order, because it's there's a lot going on here. Skill 1, to me, 2 coin pierce envy skill, which is, you know, nice if you're trying to build an envy team using other pegwad units. Um, combat start apply defense all up to two allies adjacent to this unit on the dashboard. Think similarly to something like how, uh, how G-Corp Otis applies haste to, you know, adjacent allies on the dashboard and herself. Although in this case, it just defends all up to the two adjacent ones. This means you're probably going to want Ahab to have a Ishmael, Captain Ishmael. I need to find a good name for the sake of this identity. I'm trying to stay with Captain Ishmael. But, um, you probably want her to be, like, a relatively medium speed range. So that, assumably, uh, Star Saying is faster than her, while Queeg Cliff is slower than her, assumably. Or something else like that. You know what I mean. On use, next turn, the leftmost skill slot of one other ally with the highest max HP gains highest resonance aggro. At X plus highest absolute resonance, apply protection to ally that gained aggro. Which is a lot going on, but basically, this synergizes with focusing on a sin affinity, but it doesn't specify any sin affinities. You could do it for envy, for example. If you got a 5 envy resonance, you'd apply 5 en aggro to the highest HP identity. Most likely going to be Queen Cliff, but if you're running identities beyond just base Pequod stuff, then it'll probably be, you know, anything like K-Corp Ponglu, uh, N-Corp Merso, whatever you want it to be. And then, if it's certain absolute resonance... It just also gives them a little bit of protection on top of the aggro. Very similar to a toned-down version of um, Ahab's whole uh, clash prevention thing from the actual Pequod trio fight. Although, of course, you can the enemies can still target Captain Ishmael. Although, they're just going to be less likely in focus encounters thanks to the aggro on the highest HP. And it is highest max HP, not highest current HP, so it will likely go to the tankiest center you have. And second coin inflicts a little bit of bleed. Yeah, a lot going on with, just with this skill 1 alone, but the skill 2 is the one that interests me the most. Pursue them to the end. 3 coin pride pierce skill. Combat start, offense level up to 2 allies chances to on the dashboard, similar to skill 1, but offense and defense. On use, every X resonance of the highest resonance, similar to, you know, the skill 1, whatever sin affinity you're building around, adds a Y percent chance that this unit orders the ally on its immediate right on the dashboard to use assist attack this turn. So it's percentage based, it might be like 5%, 10% for each resonance, so maybe you get like a 5 pride resonance and you get a 50% chance for this to trigger. Hard to say exactly how it's going to work out. But assist attack, as you can see on the right there, if unit A, which is the um, Captain Ishmael's case, applies this effect to unit B, uh, for the sake of, you know, theory, for the sake of explanation, we're going to say unit B is potentially star saying. 
If Captain Ishmael applies this effect to Star Sang, for example, Star Sang follows up with an unopposed skill 1 attack against the same enemy unit A attacks with its skills, with anything Captain Ishmael attacks with its skill. Activates at unit A's attack end. The skill is used as assist attack does not affect unit B's upcoming skill list. Basically, assist attack this turn means that any time Ishmael uses an attack this turn, she just... An ally to the right of her on the dashboard just gets a free skill one against the same ally. There's so many possibilities with this. We don't know how likely it's going to be triggered, but like, think about using like any ID with like a solid like skill one. Like, imagine using like something, for example, like pairing this like DHE Hong Lu going for like Wrath Absolute Resonance using Ishmael's skill three and a bunch of like skill ones from Hong Lu alongside one of these skill twos, of course, to get the assist attack going, and then just getting Hong Lu to go for so many keys at like max insight, like. And that's just one idea. You could do something like for the sake of, I don't know, like, Regret Faust building up a stupid amount of Tremor just turn one by ma making her just use a bunch of skill ones or something, you know? There's there's a lot of possibilities here. And we're not even fully down with the skill yet. At a certain highest absolute resonance, you apply damage up to the ally as well. And a certain amount of pride absolute resonance, you apply an additional pride power up. So there's kind of a little synergy. It kind of benefits for going for pride specifically for this skill too. Although you can still do anything to get the actual assist attack and the damage up going. Second coin inflicts some bleed. Third coin inflicts some burn. Yeah. A lot going on there already. But then the skill 3, Harpoon of Obsession... Four coin Wrath Pierce skill. All of this unit's uh, skills are Pierce. Deal more damage based on the target's missing HP. Okay, that's one thing. Gain coin power for every X bleed on target. It says for every X bleed on target, so that possibly means you can get up to up to two coin power or something, which probably means it's going to be pretty low rolling if you don't have bleed on the target. Either that, or it's going to be really insane if you do have bleed on the target. This is the main synergy with bleed. Captain Ishmael has here, though, and given how the other Piquad units have a fair bit of bleed, uh, definitely makes sense. If the target is staggered and defeated after attack, as the least SP, heal SP, gain poise, and gain poise count, with the amount being proportional to the highest absolute resonance of any state affinity. Now, it's after attack, instead of something like how Liu Ishmael, for example, is skill 3, um, it's the, the fourth coin needs to be the one that defeats an enemy or staggers to actually trigger the special effects there. But this skill 3 is after attack in general, so you could kill with the first coin, you could kill with the third, you could kill with the fourth, or you could stagger with any of them, and you'd be able to get this benefit to just get a bunch of SP and poise to potentially all allies depending on the resonance. Maybe you're going to be going for Wrath since it's a skill 3. Maybe you're going to go for Envy or Pride since they're a little bit more common across the uh, IDs you're probably going to be pairing with this, this in the first place. And then its coins have a bunch of random effects too. Second coin has some bleed count. Third coin has some bleed potency. Fourth coin has some burn count. You'll notice the burn is pretty, like, lackluster, and that we'll get to that, why. The bleed also is pretty simple, but there's a little bit of bleed on everything, so every single skill benefits from taking, say, uh, what's it called? Bloody Mist. So every skill will do double damage, you get the Bloody Mist Ego Gift in Mirror Dungeons. Moving on to the defensive skill and the passives, however. Do not fear me. Pride block. On use, heal SP for two adjacent allies. Simple enough. It's on use, so you're going to need to actually use the block in order to, you know, trigger it. You can't just use an unopposed block and heal, like, SPs, like, Grip Sinclair's. But still a nice effect if you do desperately need SP. Or just even if you're just using this block skill for the sake of using a block skill and you get a bit of SP out of it in the process. Not bad. And then her passive, Captain of the Pequod, after attack if the target is defeated after this unit's attack three different things trigger and really more than three things because one of these things has multiple things going on um hopefully this is this might end up being like a pride resonance passive or something if i had to guess so it might not always be the case but maybe it'll be pride owned or something first thing gain poison poise count and overheated gas harpoon next turn poison poise count simple enough this is the only way um ishmael has of gaining poise count herself which means that she probably won't be a considered a poise for the sake of lucky pouch, unfortunately, for the best, but it's nice to be able to get so. It might be like a pretty high amount of poise if this is her only method, though. And then she gains overheated gas harpoon next turn, which you can see unique status effect. For one turn, it inflict burn on hit. So now, this is where the most of her burn potency potential comes from, especially if you use like the skill 4 and get a little bit of burn count in the. or the skill 3 and get a little bit of burn count in the process, but it's coin 4. Um. She just gets a bunch of random burn infliction. Pretty, pretty cool. 
But that's not all for you know, that triggers on kill. Two other allies with the least SP heal SP and gain poise potency. Okay, simple enough. And if those allies are from the Pequod, they heal even more SP and also gain Pierce power up next turn in addition to the poise potency. So you can see you really benefit a lot from getting a kill with Ishmael, especially with the skill 3, but just in general, and you trigger so many effects. Now, I do really expect this to be a pride resonance passive, like a pro the 3 pride or something like that. The other Pequod IDs do have a fair bit of pride because their skill 1s are both pride, so it could make sense, but if this is an own, that'll be even more insane. But then the support passive, Captain's Orders, one out of the highest SP gains, Poison, Poison Count, when target is defeated after those units attack. It's a nice little passive. Nothing too insane. Don't really know if you're going to be using Captain Ishmael as a support passive, but you know, might actually benefit you if you're going for like, specific things, like a soloing with like a poise unit, like Sankotis or something, for just more poise on kill. Oh, that's probably not too bad. But yeah, a lot to say about this unit. There's a lot of potential, especially with that assist attack. Like, as I mentioned, there's so many units that could have really beneficial skill ones to spam. To, like, just build up a bunch of poise, build up a bunch of self-tremor, charge, that sort of thing. To make use of their skills more efficiently in the future. Or just people who've got really strong skill ones in the first place, like DHE Hong Lu. Or maybe you could even try Molar Boatwork Sinclair to get, you know... A lot of those four coin skill ones off, especially since it will be unopposed up uh, skill ones and Molar Boatwork Sinclair skill one. It rolls a six at max without you know the tremor. It's not winning clashes, but yeah, that's a lot. So let's move on to the patch notes next. There is not a lot interesting going on in the patch notes. Nor updates going to be at the normal time. Pequod Ishmael, Target Direction Gregor, the usual types of stuff. Some bug fixes, they're changing it so against Gas Harpoon, you can actually, like, it actually saves which phase you were on when you lose the fight, because some people seem to forget this, but in Railway 3, if you do lose a fight, you can continue with your other six centers, and the enemy should be at the same HP threshold, although Gas Harpoon was bugged, as they mentioned in last week's patch notes, and you would be reset to the first state phase no matter what. This way, the phase number stays as well. There's an issue with Sinclair's 9-2 attack weight being weird sure some abno's patterns didn't work they fixed the whole clash when heads or tails vfx thing that they mentioned a couple weeks ago nice little thing bunch of other random minor things as well and of course 300 lunacy not a lot to say about the patch notes but of course there was a lot to say about this new unit so of course but yeah that will be all for, that's all for the patch notes, that's all for this video, basically. I am so excited for Captain Ish, we'll definitely need to just shard her immediately, especially since there's no two stars, there's not really too much of a need to pull. Um, shame there isn't, though, it means there's just going to be seven IDs for the season instead of eight as from season two, but I don't think it really makes that big of a difference. I don't know what we'd get beyond, like, a like a politified person, which wouldn't make sense, or like a stub or something, but it seems like three Pequod IDs is kind of the perfect number anyways, so I don't think we'd need a stub or something like that. Because it fits the actual Ahab fight pretty well itself. But yeah, that will be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!